healing version of that Duraludon VMAX. I'm ready for it. All right, we got the fist bump. We are underway here. We made it to round seven here at the Pokemon TCG World Championships between Christian Labella and Ross Cawthon. Both of these players sitting at a five in one record, looking to get one more win and maybe a tie after that and make it to that top cut. Absolutely. And we are starting over here on Christian's side. So we do have that Duraludon V on the bench with the Arcus V in the active position. This is uh, kind of the optimal layout you already want starting off with this deck. Always having the Arcus V in the active is very important because that's what's going to accelerate your energies. So starting with the Duraludon is a little bit more tricky. There's definitely ways around it, but it's uh, it's great to have that Arceus be in the active with a Duraludon already on the bench. But we do see the Quick Ball discarding another Arceus V to it and searching the deck here, obviously checking a prize cards, uh, making sure that Christian knows everything that's in the deck, obviously, to get to this point. Uh, doing a lot of those high-level skill plays or technique strategies that we see from our top players. Uh, and here we go. So searched out another Duraludon V, benched it, and now is just passing over to Ross. So no energy attachment uh, for oh, Christian yeah. there, That's but a huge miss. yeah, that is a very big miss there. But now we are over on Ross's side, starting with the Sobble in the active position and just searching a level ball, uh, any Pokemon 90 HP or less out of the deck. And I'll be honest, I've not seen this matchup played out before. Um, this is one, oh, I have no idea how it goes, and I don't know if this is one that Ross really prepared to see. And I'm sure this is not a surprise deck by any means. Arceus Duraludon's been around for a while. It's fallen in and out of the metagame, so you at least yeah. are aware of its existence. You're not going to really get caught off guard by much, but it might not be one that you've built your deck to beat. Uh, and I no. don't know how well Radiant Charizard is going to fare against the big, beefy Duraludon VMAX. It's got so much HP. I'm very curious about that, too, because it, it has so much HP and it has so much heal ability as yep. well. I think what it's going to come down to, though, Kyle, especially knowing that Ross is playing uh, a single prize deck, is just maybe outrunning your opponent as far as resources go. You know, if they're decking out uh, quicker than you, then that could be a potential issue, I suppose, for the Duraludon uh, VMAX player Christian here. But this is also not a, uh, a matchup I've actually uh, really run either, Kyle. I don't think anyone was expecting this, but I could not be happier right now <laughs> with this matchup. So we are over to Christian now, drawing for turn, and kind of an awkward hand here. See some interesting cards in there. Uh, I think I see a Pokey Gear 3.0 hanging out in the hand for Christian. Not a card we see very often, but uh, yes. at least I think an Ultra Ball. So we'll see Arceus V-Star get up and running. There is an argument for, you know, just playing the Ultra Ball, maybe just get a Duraludon VMAX and then play the research so that if you draw into that double turbo energy, you can just go straight into the Trinity Charge from uh, Arceus V. So it looks like Christian may be lining that up. And I think an ideal turn would be, you know, just Trinity Charge, load up Duraludon VMAX and start swinging in with that G-Max pulverization. Yeah, that is definitely a factor of, of this deck. And something, uh, another reason why it's good to have that Arceus be in the active position as well, because if you do end up whiffing that first turn energy attachment, which can be pretty devastating sometimes, as long as you, you do still have the recovery of it from the Arceus B with the Trinity Charge, as Kyle said. So uh, the biggest thing is that energy acceleration, because the Duraludon VMAX does require quite a bit of energy, more than uh, most of the attacks that we see on some of our very strong Pokemon here, but that's exactly what we're going to see most likely here. I think that's actually just what happened with the Trinity Charge and searching out those energies to place onto one of the benched Duraludon VMAX, which does require a fighting energy <laughs> as well. Which two is, metal energy, yeah. Yes, a fighting energy and the two metals. So a little bit of variation in the energy attachments there. Also just searching through the deck, but it is going to be placed there. And then we're going to toss it back over to Ross after the shuffle. Of course, this is one of the most interesting decks. Uh, we saw it do very well at regional championships. It... <laughs> Duraludon VMAX was such an interesting card. It came out in that Evolving Skies expansion, and 
when people first saw it, like, oh yeah, that ability is really interesting, it's really strong against decks that use a lot of special energy, but the energy cost was so restrictive, it was really hard to use. And then when Arceus V and V-Star came out, it's like, oh yeah, we can just play a bunch of different energy types now. You can use Arceus to power up Duraludon. Um, and, you know, there was a certain point in time where having the defense against special energy was super important, especially against, like, Mew VMAX decks and things like that. Uh, but as time went on, it's like, yeah, that ability is still important, but I think it's just big. It's got a lot of HP. You can use things like Hyper Potion and the Crystal Cave and keep healing off damage, and it's just going to keep smacking you with the 220 damage G-Max Pulverization. So this kind of middle of the road kind of tanky healing strategy really is annoying to deal with and you know if you draw well with this deck and draw your hyper potions yeah. and double turbo energy at the right time it's just hard to take down this gigantic pokemon you know something that definitely hinders the duraludon vmax a lot is hand disruption mm. um, because there really isn't a ton of draw support there with the deck uh, you have the stability of the arceus v star um, star power ability, so there is that. But I'm wondering uh, if Ross's deck actually does play hand disruption? I typically no, you wouldn't play it in this kind of a deck. Um, yeah. I can't remember, Ross may have played Roxanne, but I don't think so. Usually late game, you're playing things like Clara and Raihan, so you yeah. don't really have the room to play the hand disruption cards. Something we are gonna see here, though, is something we haven't seen a ton of in the last uh, decade at the World Championships, <laughs> and that That's is true. a rare candy into a stage two. So gonna go ahead, get that Inteleon evolved, skip straight from Sobble to Inteleon, and then use the Shady Dealings, and we're gonna see Something we've actually seen from Ross a few times now, a turn to attack with the Inteleon with the Aqua Bullet. Uh, it's going to get some damage and put some pressure on it. He's actually going to pair it with a boss's orders and say, you know what? This Duraludon VMAX is a problem. I know I need to soften it up as quickly as I can. So let's just go right for it. And this has been a pretty picture perfect start for Ross. He's evolved all of his Pokemon this turn, lots of shady dealings. Yeah, can't ask for much more. Yep, going in with the Hisuian Heavy Ball there as well. So checking out the prize cards, being able to select a basic Pokemon out of them if it's in there, and then just putting the prize cards back. So if Ross wasn't already aware of what is prized, uh, now they definitely are. Uh, but yeah, that's. I, I think you can tell that Ross has a lot of experience behind this deck by the way that they operate it. You know, uh, he's he's so methodical with the decisions uh, that they make. And the Mew now coming out. I actually, uh, I didn't see that the first time. Well, I didn't get to pay much attention to the last <laughs> time Ross played this, but uh, having that mysterious tail Mew in there is very helpful as well. And in this circumstance, when, like you said, Kyle, if there's not a lot of hand disruption, uh, knowing that Christian could just stack uh, cards in the hand, especially knowing there's heal ability and having those energies accessible, uh, I think it definitely is going to be important to get off some early attacks and just put on as much damage as possible, as consistently as possible. And Ross is looking like uh, he's in a pretty good position to do that. Yeah, and I think the Mew is a concession to the fact that uh, these Intellion engine decks can be very vulnerable in the late game to things like Marnie and Roxanne. So the Mew is kind of a, a safeguard against that, gives you an out to find something. And there we see the boss's orders going on the Duraludon VMAX that has no energy on it. So Ross hoping to strand this uh, energyless Duraludon VMAX, get some damage, just kind of be annoying here and just hope that Christian doesn't have access to a switching card. But the V-Star power has not been used yet. We see Arceus V-Star get evolved right there, and so Star Birth is an option. You gotta think no matter what, Christian will be able to switch this Duraludon VMAX out of the active spot. Yeah, definitely. Duraludon VMAX doesn't really play a lot of switch cards usually. I, I see there's only one switch in the deck for Christian as well, so. Uh, being able to get that is very important. Yep, so now we see a quick ball just threw away the choice belt, realizing that, yep, there's not going to be any uh, V yeah. or V Max or whatever dealing with uh, on Ross's side. So easy card to throw away with a quick ball. And then we just saw the Starbirth. So yeah, 
things are going to go smoothly for Christian. There is that single switch card there. So going back into the Arceus V-Star into a professor's research. So drawing a fresh seven cards here for Christian. And uh, Christian kind of has the same strategy as Ross really does, just knocking out Pokemon as consistently as possible and being able to heal the damage off of those damaged Pokemon and just sustain the knockouts. So it's really just going to be a battle of who can be more consistent with the damage that they're outputting on the field. Yeah, now one small thing, you did see Ross use the Aqua Bullet and was able to put 20 yep. damage on a bench Pokemon and opted to do damage to the Arceus V-Star. You might look at it and say, why wouldn't he go after Draladon VMAX? Because that's going to be the big thing that needs to be knocked out. Uh, but Ross, assuming Christian probably plays Crystal Cave in the deck, which heals 30 damage from all of your uh, Dragon-type Pokemon. So uh, it could be wasted damage there, putting 20 on the Duraludon VMAX. So might as well put it in a spot where it could potentially be useful. All right, here we go. So Christian takes that per first knockout. Of course, only going to be one prize card, as it would be for all of Ross's Pokemon that are going to be knocked out. So now it is back over to Ross. Uh, now, this Radiant Charizard deck really works on like the back end, the back half of the deck, because obviously you can get those huge numbers from the Radiant Charizard uh, once more of your Pokemon are knocked out. So we are going to be seeing that later on in the matchup. Uh, but for right now, Ross kind of just needs to navigate around, okay, what do I do in the meantime for that? Because of course you can only play one Radiant Pokemon in your deck. So uh, in order to draw it out and be able to attack with it once it gets knocked out, out, you have to be able to retrieve it again somehow and get it back out there on the field taking knocks. So I think it's going to get really spicy once we start warming up uh, for both of these players and kind of getting through the match, but slowly just grinding through here. Um, what do you, how relevant do you think the time is for this matchup, Kyle? Because uh, it seems like it could be a pretty grindy match. Yeah, these are going to be some slow decks. I'm not sure how many games we'll finish here in the 50 minutes, but yeah. this will be the important one for sure. Yeah, the way Ross's deck is built, he actually can attack with Radiant Charizard pretty quickly. Yeah. It requires a very specific set of cards, though, and specific cards in the discard pile. But between uh, Magma Basin, Raihan, and Twin Energy, you can get four energy onto a Radiant Charizard in a single turn. Uh, but this turn was just going to be awkward for Ross no matter what. I don't think there was just there was a very good attack that could be lined up. Um, and the way that this Arceus Duraludon deck is set up, you really force your opponent to take more prizes than they want to. Uh, if they have to go through the Arceus V-Star, those are almost wasted prize cards because you still have to knock out both Duraludon VMAX. Uh, and even if Ross was able to power up Radiant Charizard this turn, he still would have needed a, an additional damage modifier, maybe like Galarian Zigzagoon or a Choice Belt. And it's just an annoying amount of things to have to have this turn. So if I had to guess, I'd say Ross is just going to kind of take the turn off. Looks like we are going to see the Snorlax. So he's just going to use this opportunity to say, hey, I know I can't do anything super important this turn. Mm -hmm. So may as well try to build up resources for the next turn where maybe I'll have a better shot at doing something uh, relevant with my Radiant Charizard. Yeah, like, let me just stack up some cards and plan out my strategy from here. So it was the Irida for that air balloon that we saw attached to the Mew. Into our Snorlax, our uh, Gourmandai's ability drawing up to seven, and then just right back over to Christian uh, after that Gourmandai's uh, ends your attack. Yep, we do see Boss's orders bringing up one of those Drizzile. That's going to severely limit the options that Ross has on the next turn. Um, you love to chain all these together, you know, use one Inteleon Shady Dealings, scoop up net, play them back down, and other ones just search for a bunch of trainer cards, but Christian recognizing, hey, knocking out this Snorlax doesn't do anything, but knocking out this Drizzile can certainly limit your options. So this has been a perfectly executed game plan for Christian so far. 
Uh, you might look at it and say, wow, not really doing anything too complicated here, but that's the beauty of the deck. You don't it have is. to. It is. It really is, yeah. And that's that's why I enjoy playing it, too, because it is, it's very linear in a lot of ways. And I think that's why people actually discounted it so much. You know, I feel like uh, my Duraludon didn't get a lot of respect going into this world <laughs> championship. Um, but it's, it, it's great to see it on the, on the stage here performing well, especially. So we did see that knockout uh, there for Christian on that Drizzile. And then back over to Ross. Yep, so it's still going to be an interesting turn for Ross. Uh, there are now two prize cards taken for Christian, so Radiant Charizard yep. needs three energy to attack. You can do that with the Magma Basin plus a twin energy, and if you're able to do that, you can maybe play something like a Boss's Orders and bring up that damaged Duraludon VMAX and finish it off with the uh, Combustion Blast for 250. So there yeah, is an opportunity here to take down that damaged Draladon VMAX before Christian is able to heal it. So we'll see if Ross is able to put those pieces together. If not, again, you have that kind of frustrating situation where you kind of have to knock out the Arceus V-Star. It is doing enough damage to take prize cards, so you can't just ignore it. But in terms of progressing to winning the game, it doesn't help you at all. Yeah, definitely. We, we will see uh, what Ross decides to choose off of this Shady Dealings and Teleon uh, that was just activated, searching out two trainer cards from the deck. I think this is going to be a pretty important decision here, Kyle, because like you said, um, it's pretty important to be able to get uh, at least, you know, uh, the knockout would be absolutely fantastic, especially yep. as you said, you know, if you see the Duraludon VMAX player does not have the heal and has not healed yet, you might as well capitalize on that if you can. So the yeah. Raihan was taken off of the Shady Dealings, as well as the Magma Basin, I think, was also searched out. So those were the two. Yeah, we're definitely going to see Radiant Charizard attack yeah. here. Uh, one thing I kept saying that was uh, not very smart was that you can put a Twin Energy on to attack a Duraludon VMAX. Certainly can't do that. Oh, yeah, you definitely can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we thought it was uh, kind of irrelevant in this matchup, Kyle, but that is definitely true. Something we haven't mentioned, uh, except for a couple of times, that you cannot attack with a special energy yep. uh, into that Duraludon VMAX because of its ability. Something you can do, though, is Magma Basin, Raihan and do a manual attach for the turn. Yep. That gets you to three basic energy. So this line of play is still available. It's just a little more difficult to pull off. Well, we actually see uh, oh, the Raihan onto the Sobble. Okay. With the water uh, energy. So I wonder then if Ross is just going to try to knock out the Arceus V Star this turn. You can use a twin energy to do that. So there we go. Got a scoop up net, picking up the whole Intellion line. Going to see the. Drizzile, Shady Dealings, and this is where being precise with all of these Shady Dealings abilities, searching for a trainer card, putting the exact one you needed to your hand, uh, maybe setting yourself up for a future turn. It's all important. Um, it's each kinda, one matters. It's it's funny to see the sort of uh, opposite ends of things, though. Christian's yeah. turn takes like two seconds, and then it's working you know, so hard. <laughs> yeah, Ross has so much uh, so much more to do on these turns. Even just shuffling takes a lot longer, you know, with these shady dealing searches. But okay, so there we go. There is the twin energy, and I think a choice belt is in hand already as well. Yep. It hurts to use one just to knock out the Arceus. You'd love to save it for the Duraludon, but hey, you need to get this knockout. You can't just sit here and keep letting your opponent take prize cards. You gotta do something eventually. So Ross just figuring out, hey, all right, this is my only option here. Uh, for the rest of the game, he's just gonna be trying to loop this Radiant Charizard with Clara, with um, Ordinary Rod. This is going to be the one Pokemon Ross attacks with for the rest of the game. And we'll see if it's enough. We'll see if Radiant Charizard being used repeatedly can fight through these Skyscraper Pokemon. That would be very impressive to see, for sure. Uh, we also did see the Rescue Stretcher pick up uh, that Drizzile and uh, Sobble from the Discard 2. OK, this is a really interesting play from Christian because uh, realizing that, hey, Inteleon's really important. Also, this is awkward because it leaves the twin energy on Radiant Charizard. If you knock it out, it gives the opportunity for Ross to just Clara, get it back, power it up again. Um, but when you leave the twin energy off there, uh, on there, 
It forces Ross to have to do something like retreat and then switch back into it or scoop up net. So just making life as hard as possible for Ross. Honestly, that makes a lot of sense here, Kyle, because there's still a lot of one prize Pokemon on the board state for Ross. So if Christian can just play around the Radiant Charizard, as long as that twin energy is attached and just make Ross go through so much more. And look at that, that deck too. There's not a lot of cards left yep. for Ross as well. So this is kind of dwindling down here. I was talking about, well, maybe the Duraludon VMAX player might be a running out of resources, but it might be the opposite <laughs> way around here for Ross too. So this is definitely an uphill battle, I think. And that was an extremely heads up play from Christian because, you know, if you have Gust, which usually Duraludon plays like four Ross's orders, um, you got Gust. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> you know, if you can just play around the Radiant Zard and still have the option for that healing as well. I mean, multiple attackers here for Christian on board state. I think this Duraludon VMAX is actually in a really strong position. And so I think the play we're going to see lined up for Ross here is the double cross switcher. You uh, bring out the Drowlet on VMAX, switch in your own Radiant Charizard, retreat the Charizard, then scoop up net something, and then get a fire energy back onto it so that you don't have the special energy anymore and you can attack. You don't have to worry about that Skyscraper ability anymore. So it's going to be a little bit of a convoluted play here, really technical thing where sequencing is super important. Very important. I mean, if anyone's going to be great at sequencing, though, I feel like <laughs> it's Ross Coffin. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, if anyone's confused here, the Radiant Charizard, uh, the attack cost does go down as Pokemon are knocked out uh, with that Excited Heart ability. So it is possible for Ross to kind of make things work as well with that retreat and the cross switcher play, if we can see that. Oh no. <gasps> we see Ross use the combustion blast, but there's the twin energy on there and Skyscraper what? prevents all damage. Ah, an what? oversight there from Ross. You hate to see it, but yes, yeah, Skyscraper is in effect. So that Radiant Charizard is going to do zero damage, and that could be the difference in this game. You know, if you think about, uh, that's actually happened quite frequently in a lot of my matchups when I play Duraludon. You know, if someone's, you know, not super well versed in playing against Duraludon and doesn't uh, really, you know, catch that too, that is, uh, that is definitely something you can kind of capitalize on. And then we saw the heal. The yep. Hyper Potion heal as well from Christian. So now like, Ross is just- Christian just pass? I, I think so because of because the energy is attached. So wow. maybe Christian is just thinking, uh, if there's no gust in hand, let me just pass and uh, hope. I mean, Ross is also very close to uh, to a deck out here as well. I mean, I don't know how many cards are left there, but it looks pretty thin. Wow. So maybe just thinking, I, I can outlast you potentially, Ross. So let's let's see what you have. But like you said, Kyle, there are some, there are outs here if Ross is able to get that twin energy off of the Charizard. So that might be uh, an interesting thing that we see here, as long as Ross can sort of put it together. There is, of course, no more damage on the Duraludon VMAX, though, at this point, because of that Hyper Potion. Uh, and if anyone's can be confused about that interaction, there was the double turbo energy being attached. The Hyper Potion discards two energy from a Pokemon, but of course that double turbo um, is treated as two energy, which allows you to heal that 120 off of the Duraludon VMAX. Okay, so something that's really awkward in this matchup for Ross is that Combustion Blast can't be used in consecutive turns. Uh, so yeah, if Christian is just trying to go with this strategy of stalling out for time, um, not in like a negative sense, but just like buying as many turns as possible to keep healing, then it makes sense to just kind of sit here because it's really hard for Ross to keep using Combustion Blast over and over. We're going to see this turn, Ross, you know, coming to the conclusion, okay, yeah, I, I need, need to get to rid of this. <laughs> do the retreat, uh, get the energy back on the Charizard, and then play a scoop up net. But he's gone through, I think, this is going to be the fourth scoop up net that gets played. So there's not really many ways for Ross to switch the Charizard in and out anymore. So this could be a situation where you just Oof. can't keep attacking in consecutive turns. It's going to be really awkward. Um, this could also be a situation for Christian where you look at it and say, I don't think I can really lose this game. Yeah. So if I make this one take as long as possible, it only benefits me. So I don't need to attack and take the knockout. Um, even though if you look at it, if Christian attacked there, I don't think it was possible to lose. I think 
you would just get three uncontested prizes. There's no way Ross can get four prizes in that time frame. Uh, so you can look at it and say, all right, there's no way I'm going to lose. Um, but maybe I want this game to take a little more time, and I don't want That's game true. two to finish. That I don't is know. This true. is there's like multiple know. win conditions on the line here for yeah. Christian, essentially. <laughs> um, Trying to figure out all all the you know galaxy brain things that are going on here. Yeah, absolutely. But we we did see Ross uh, come to that realization and then do exactly what we were talking about before, Kyle. So being able to actually swing with that radiant Charizard for that 250 damage but of course you can't use uh this attack during your next turn as well for the radiant charizard so that does also come into play uh what is in the hand here for christian have you seen it another I, hyper potion oh my god well that's a that's a great thing to have in the hand <laughs> the double turbo and another hyper potion oh and we're gonna see a marnie okay so not a lot of cards were left in ross's deck here but now we're gonna have uh quite a few being added there that that hand was huge for Ross. so uh christian activated the marnie uh both players shuffle their hands yep, put it at the bottom of their deck exactly and what christian was looking for the crystal cave yes to heal this is, this is where taking that turn off is really annoying because if Christian just, you know, says pass again, uh, then Ross doesn't have any. Yeah, and Ross just concedes. Wow. Okay. Realizes, yep, that's it. No need to waste more time on this one. So Christian's going to take game one with that Duraludon VMAX. Duraludon. Woo. <laughs> Making the rounds here in day two. I love it. Yeah, we didn't talk much about it, I think, Kyle, but Duraludon actually won a regional as well yep. in Milwaukee. Um, and I think everyone was really surprised by that at the time, too. I'm sure they're probably looking at this matchup right now, surprised as well. But Christian believed in the Duraludon, the skyscraper, uh, <laughs> matching, matching some of the buildings here in London, too. So, <laughs> and is now five. 1-0 with it and potentially going to pick up another game. Who knows what's about to happen? That was actually, uh, even though, again, a very intricate matchup for us, Kyle. We've been getting these all day long. Um, still a thrilling one to watch. Are you surprised that Ross actually swung with the special energy attached? Um, a little bit, yeah. But, I mean, like you said, it's an easy mistake to make. Oh, yeah, it is. Uh, sometimes you just forget that that Skyscraper ability exists, especially because Ross's deck is not one that's really reliant on special energy. No. You know, if you're playing a deck that's all special energy, like a Reggie deck or something like that, you're very aware of Skyscraper. But when you're playing a deck that's mostly basic energy and just kind of has a random special energy in there, it's not really an interaction you're thinking of. It's not at the top of your mind. So I can see it happening. Of course, you wouldn't expect that yeah. from a player like Ross, but hey, it just shows you everybody's human. Um, That's true. Even the best aren't flawless. Uh, we see it time and time again. I don't, in my opinion, I don't think anybody's gone through an entire tournament and played flawlessly. Oh. There's just so many opportunities in a game of the Pokemon TCG to make a little flub somewhere. Oh yeah, so, definitely. Especially uh, after hours of oh, play. Yeah. <laughs> On the stage in the high pressure environment, so. And uh, and like we said for Ross, like so many of these uh, optimal turns are seem to be mapped out already for Ross as well. So, you know, even just running through that and being like, I know what I have to do here, 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 and here. It's, I feel like really easy to kind of slip up and make that mistake because you're not really factoring it in. You're just yeah. kind of one track. I know that I need to make this damage. This is how we make this damage. Let me search out these cards, play, play it this way, and unfortunately just spaced on the Duraludon VMAX uh, ability there, which again is, it's, you know, it's, it's just a small little red text and uh, it, it shuts down a lot of people sometimes. And, uh, you know, that's a, that's a like, I'm just going to concede on PTCGO when that <laughs> happens, you know what I mean? Yeah, I was honestly <laughs> surprised that Ross didn't concede immediately after that. Really? Just, just because okay. at that point, the game is almost lost. So I was a bit surprised that Ross didn't go, oh, okay, yeah, um, I should just save time and move on. Yeah. Uh, maybe it was just shell-shocked and thought maybe there was a chance to still win, but yeah. Um, but yeah, we do have well over 20 minutes for this game, so still plenty of time. Yeah, Ross, speaking of time. <laughs> I think Ross did choose to go first in this game. Um, you know, sometimes players opt to go second with uh, these kind of Sobble decks because you get to keep calling. It gives you a little bit of a consistency boost, but maybe against something like an Arceus Duraludon deck that 
doesn't have a strong attacking turn one, it's still correct to go first. Yeah, definitely. But I mean, still not the worst either for uh, Duraladon going second because we could see the same thing that we saw last game with the Trinity charge. Yep. You know, getting those energies out is so important for Duraladon. So we could potentially see that again for Christian, depending on what's in the starting hand as well. But Ross already popping off here with the energy <laughs> search and two level balls. Yeah, it's a great hand. Yeah, definitely. I think he's already got a Drizzile and a rare candy lined up for next turn. So we could see the uh, turn two Inteleon attack once again, put on a bit of pressure. So yeah, great start for Ross. We'll see what Christian has going on uh, their side. But yeah, if you're Ross, you're just trying to I think at this point, I think you have to realistically be playing to just win this game and see what happens from there. Uh, you know, a tie at this portion in the tournament is still good enough. Then if you win your next round, you're still in contention for that top cut. Uh, but you have to win this game at all costs. Yes, definitely. So Ross just attaching that fire energy onto the Sobble and then passing it over to Christian. So now we're in Christian's turn here. Quick ball was in hand, discarding again. Wow, this is literally the exact same play as last game, <laughs> which I mean shows you how linear this deck really is. But you know, the more linear a deck is, yes, players can have ways to play around it, but it also helps you uh, knowing how you play each of your turns, you know? I know exactly what is my optimal first turn, exactly what I need to do in this matchup and this matchup, and it can help you a lot too. So just quick walling, discarding that Arceus V into another Duraludon V on the bench and shuffling up here. I didn't get to see what else was in the hands, but honestly, there have been so many surprises today, Kyle. I wouldn't even be surprised if Christian just pulled out a Jolteon right now in a, in a memory castle. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, but here we go. There is an Avery uh, drawing into three more cards off of that Avery. Yeah, no double turbo energy, so there's not going to be that Trinity charge this turn. So yep. um, you won't see the Duraludon Slightly get powered up quite yet, but still a strong start for Christian. You know going against this type of deck. Your Arceus V will not be getting knocked out on the following turn. You're going to be able yes. to evolve to Arceus V star, use star birth, and then set up from there. So even though you didn't find the super optimal double turbo energy on the first turn, yeah. you're perfectly fine. Yeah, that's that's also, I guess, kind of the beauty playing against a Radiant Charizard deck as well. <laughs> yeah. Although we have seen Ross um, attack really yeah. early, like each. The rare candy has been really important. Yeah, yeah, and I, I, isn't there only one in the deck too, yeah. Kyle? Yeah, one in the deck, and we've seen it utilized so many times for Ross. So that is definitely huge, and we're about to see it again, yep. Kyle. That is awesome. So rare candy straight into that Inteleon, activating the Shady Dealings ability. Who says this is a reactive deck? Looks like an yeah, aggressive Yeah, this one. is aggressive. <laughs> Here we go. Ross being able to search out two trainer cards. Oh, he's going to do the same thing as Again? the last game. Yes. Here we go, the energy search in a boss's order, still evolving here into another Drizzile on the bench as well. Yeah, the Search only thing through. I don't love about the boss's orders play is that uh -huh. it's very unlikely to kind of stick and slow your opponent down. All they need is the Arceus V-Star, and they can star birth for double turbo plus switch. Uh, That's very true. So, I mean, it is going to help because it'll get some kind of chip damage in on the Duraludon V. Now, that will be reduced because of the ability. Oh, no, the hard coat. Is that what it's called? <laughs> I think like something that. like that. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it... It would be awesome if you do get to boss's orders, bring up the Duraludon V, kind of strand it for a turn and make your opponent miss an attack. But it seems really unlikely for that to happen because of how powerful Starbirth is on that Arceus V-Star. It is hard coat. There you go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I'm impressed with that I remembered that. All right. <laughs> so here we go. We're still over on Ross's uh, turn. We did see the activation of that Hisuian Heavy Ball, uh, which did get a Pokemon, a basic yep. Pokemon out of the Sobble. prize cards, that Sobble, and then replaced real quick there with the Hisuian Heavy Ball. Uh, so Ross still making making his way through the turn here. We have another energy search to get out a water energy from the deck and just self shuffling up here. Yep, so pretty much all you can ask for as Ross. I guess one of the really unfortunate downsides of Ross's deck is that in this kind of a situation, your opponent can be pretty aware 
And yeah, we do need the damage reduction. Yes. Your opponent can be pretty aware of what you're playing. Uh, I don't know if this is a situation where Christian is just going to just never attack, but that is a viable strategy, kind of tanking in game two, knowing that, you know, if I never take a knockout, you just never get to use Radiant Charizard. So I can just <laughs> sit here and just, you know, absorb all your punches. You're not going to get knockouts fast enough to win this round. That, that'd be I, fun I to cast, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if there's enough time to really, or there may be too much time to pull that off. But true, true. There, that is a viable strategy at this point, just saying, you know what? It's going to take you forever to knock out even this Duraludon. <laughs> if I just don't take any prize cards, what can you do? That is very true. All right, so I think this is, I'm looking at the hand here. There is a Duraludon VMAX. Oh. But uh, well, he doesn't have. Uh, I was about to say, there's no uh, switch out. There's no Arceus V Star. Yeah, there's no evolution. Oh, he's got nothing. Oh wow. Okay, so we were talking about that Arceus V Star use being able to use its ability, uh, Star Birth ability, to search out the exact cards we need, just like the last game. But unfortunately for Christian, no way to actually get it. Which this actually is something that you can see from Duraludon from time to time. <laughs> if you don't have the cards you need. Uh, in your hand, there's not a lot of outs that you have. So it is definitely, it definitely has that potential to brick. So we are, we just had to pass over to Ross and now Ross is able to get into this turn, starting it off, evolving into a Drizzile, activating that shady dealings. We've been saying it all day and we'll probably be saying it all weekend, Kyle, <laughs> <laughs> uh, searching out a trainer card from the deck. What do you think Ross is looking for here, Kyle? Not really sure. You might just be going for an Irida here, set up another uh, Shady Dealings for the next turn. I think Ross really just wants to get an energy attachment onto a Radiant Charizard to at least start to threaten something. Uh, you want to just have attackers prepared. You want to make sure at this point that you are just attacking every single turn. You need to be putting pressure on and trying to win the game as quickly as possible. And we could even see a Choice Belt go on to the Inteleon and Aqua Bullet for the full 120 damage here. Just try to move forward, try to get knockouts as quickly as possible because Ross knows at this point, the clock is his enemy. He needs to get all six prize cards before the time runs out. Otherwise, this is gonna be a big L for him in this very important round. Yeah, Christian taking that game one for sure uh, is definitely a, th a thing. But I mean, being in this position, Christian missing an entire turn there definitely helps Ross at least when your when your opponent doesn't have the optimal mm. turn that they want that is a uh, very important ooh is that the zigzagoon yeah Ross might be getting really aggressive here uh, I like it with the Galarian zigzagoon uh, you, you, yeah I think just the 10 extra damage with the choice belt is going to be a knockout on the Duraludon V Nice. I mean, that's huge, actually, Kyle. That is definitely huge because, like yeah. you said, you want to get these knockouts, especially because it's it's a V, it's two prize cards, not three once it's a V Max. But who knows if you'll be able to even knock out a V Max, depending on if Christian has the heal and all of that that you have to get through. So going through these Vs is actually giant. Mm -hmm. And oh, here we go, kind of a uh, a savior here for Christian potentially. Hope you get 3.0 against oh, the looks professor's Looks like it research. is. Professor's research, but that also does mean if it is used, you are going to have to discard uh, quite a bit here as well. So, of course, playing to everything you can, evolving into that Duraludon VMAX there for Christian, and then going into a Quick Ball, discarding another card there to search out another basic Pokemon. Opting for the Arceus V? Yeah, I think that's just going to be thrown away with yeah, most Professor's likely. research. Yeah, do you have to throw away a Hyper Potion and I think another boss's order? So uh, potentially costly professor's research here, but you got to find that Arceus V-Star yeah, right you now. You need to do something right now, exactly. So not never something you want to throw away, but you have to be able to do that. And we did find it here. So the Arceus V-Star coming into play for Christian. And we are, yep, going to see that Star Birth ability for the V-Star power activate. Searching out any two cards from the deck and also not having to reveal them either. And also looking at the hand, making sure uh, these two cards are the exact two cards Christian wants. Yeah, I think Christian at this point looking through the deck, making sure that there's enough basic energy off of this uh, Trinity Nova to power up the Duraludon VMAX. Looks like there's plenty of metal and uh, fighting energy in there. So yep, yeah, that's gonna be perfect. And yeah, at this point it's just what two cards do I want? Um, looks like 
taking just a couple supporter cards, something we don't see very often, a Marty yeah. and a boss's orders after you've already used uh, your supporter card for the turn. So may have been a spot where uh, Christian thought, hey, maybe I need something here. And then as you look through the deck, you realize, you know what, I don't actually need this. Maybe I'll just stack my hand for the following turns. Yeah, that's definitely true, especially, you know, not seeing any sort of disruption cards from Ross and probably not going to see them because Ross kind of stacks cards in hand. So not seeing that at this point, maybe just thinking, OK, let me line uh, what I need to up and make sure as well. I mean, just thinning the deck, too, so that the uh, the top card that is drawn at the start of the turn is maybe potentially uh, something even better for the turn. So Ross evolving into that Shady Dealings Inteleon, yeah. able to draw out two more trainer cards from the deck. Yeah, I think Ross can line up and attack with the Radiant Charizard this turn, with Raihan, Ooh, Magma Basin, and the Twin Energy. So yeah, Shady Dealings gonna find Scoop Up Net and the Raihan. We'll see if he goes for this play. Do you see the Radiant Charizard? Was the Magma so. Basin in hand too? Yep. Oh yeah, gonna, it is. I think he's just going for the full aggression here. You Raihan, get one energy from the discard onto the Radiant Charizard. You Magma Basin, get another one from the discard. Neither of those count as your attachment for the turn. Then you get the twin energy to provide two more energy. And all of a sudden, that five energy attack is powered up, even though your opponent's only taken one prize card. Oh, I love this. I love. I live for this, Kyle. This gameplay is actually surprisingly riveting right now. <laughs> yeah, All right. so it is going to be. There we go. I mean, this is a huge knockout. It is going to be just one Duraludon VMAX versus the world at this point. Yes, absolutely. Ross is going to be taking another two prize cards. And this is only like the first couple of turns as well, Kyle. So taking four prize cards in your first couple of turns with the Radiant Charizard deck is pretty impressive. Yeah, Ross understanding what he needs to do yeah. to take down this game and stay in the hunt here at the World Championships. Now, there is going to be a long way to go still. Ross will have a pretty significant prize card lead, but there is no easy path to knock out this gigantic Duraludon VMAX. It's got so much HP. Oh. It doesn't have a weakness for you to prey on. So it's just going to take several turns of attacking to get through this one big Pokemon. And this is what's going to stand in Ross's way between him and potentially drawing this match to a 1-1 tie. Yeah, because we do only have eight minutes left on the clock. You know, I know I know the stream doesn't necessarily like to see ties on the stream, <laughs> but we've been seeing a lot of them today, and that might be how this ends as well, potentially, for our players in this match. But uh, another thing is Christian does have to have those heal abilities, which I don't think I see any of them in hands right now for Christian. But, uh, you know, we did see the star birth pop, especially maybe Christian even knew, OK, if this is knocked out, and I want to use this ability while I can. And we did see the boss's order and, and the Marnie drawn from that. The boss's order actually being played here right now to boss up a Drizzile. This is a similar strategy as we saw from Christian in the last game. I don't think Ross is going to make the same mistake. No, it? I don't think so either. I do not think so either. Not after that game. So we did see the knockout here for Christian. But again, you got to go through one prize at a time uh, versus this Radiant Charizard deck. So now Ross has to figure out, OK, how do I remove this uh, special energy? Yeah. Since I can't swing into the Duralit on VMAX until it's gone. You have to promote Radiant Charizard. Yeah. Right? You, you can have only to retreat. retreat. You can only retreat once per turn. Yep. You have to send out the Radiant Charizard, retreat, discard the Twin Energy and the Fire, send something else up, use and there's the Magma scoop up Basin. Nets. Yeah, then you scoop up Net. Again, really technical play, really important sequencing here. If you mess up any portion of this, you'll end up not being able to attack. But uh, you can see how you need to proceed here. Yeah, this is definitely a game I think Ross is going to come out of and being like, wow, that uh, that took a lot <laughs> to play through. <laughs> yep. So we did see that retreat off of the Radiant Charizard into a Sobble. It's got another basic energy as well. Yep, and now then the Magna another, Basin as well. Now that another prize card has been taken, uh, the ability for Radiant Charizard reduces the energy cost down to three. Uh, I was wondering if Christian should have just not taken a knockout that turn and just passed the turn and said, Ooh. you know what, there's actually no way for you to attack me in this turn, so I can just take a turn off. 
and then we'll go from there. But nope, Christian deciding I want to go after the Drizzile, take a knockout, and figured that was the best route to victory. But you can see this is almost activated an attack now for Ross. He's now yes. able to power up the Radiant Charizard and attack this turn. I'm really wondering if Christian's going to end up using that Marnie, depending on what is in the hand. If there isn't any heal, uh, you can take away cards from Ross, as well as, you know, having a better chance into drawing into that heal, because that's definitely going to be needed to sustain through this matchup. Yep, so this is still anybody's game, even though it's yeah. just one Duraludon VMAX. The uh, lone survivor here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be very difficult for Ross to knock out. There's still that awkwardness of not being able to attack in consecutive turns with Combustion Blast. Uh, there's still so many things to sort out with these players. We do see another Shady Dealings, and Ross going to go with the Raihan. Um, so maybe just prepping for the next turn, making sure you evolve up to Drizzile so that you have an option to evolve to Inteleon on the next turn. Yeah, definitely. Preparing for those future turns, very important. Only two prize cards left. Look at but all those dice. Yeah, all those dice, I know. 250. I mean, we knew the Radiant Charizard was showing up somewhere uh, <laughs> during this event because it is just that good of a Pokemon from our newer expansion of the, uh, the mini Pokemon Go set as well. So it is just such a good card. Yep, we're seeing players put it to full use here, and we do Ooh, see the Marnie. Yep, there's so that Marnie. All those cards that Ross has been stockpiling are now heading to the bottom of the deck. And if you're Christian, I think you're really looking for double turbo plus hyper potion. Yeah, you need to see that. There is the crystal cave, but I, I don't think we saw the hyper potion. There was the double turbo, yep. but if there's no hyper potion? Well, you know Ross can't attack next turn. I At least with the the Charizard, yeah. Yeah, well, there is actually an out if you have Air Balloon. You can oh, Air Balloon true. onto the Radiant Charizard, retreat, scoop up net, and then attach an energy, oh. and then attack for the game. So, yeah. After a, Mar after a Marnie, too, if Ross is able to pull that off, that would be absolutely wild. Oh, I'm just going to see the attack, though. So Christian's okay. just going to say, all right, I don't think you have a way to power up this Radiant Charizard after the knockout. But if Ross can, oh. this is going to be the game. And we see Evolution Incense in hand. This could be a huge, mysterious tale to find oh one more crucial goodness. item card to pull off this game-winning attack. Well, that Trying pause, to see what it was. That, that pause typically isn't a good thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> unfortunately. And already cross switchers in the hand. It was like two cross switchers that are just not applicable at all right now, unfortunately. Playing an energy search is what it looks like here for Ross. Oh, that oh. might do it. If there's energy in the deck, that's a big question, though. Ross doesn't play very many basic energy in this deck. Hey, there is there one. There is the water. So if you can Shady Dealings for uh, Clara plus a way to switch this Mew, I think Ross already has Magma Basin in oh hand. Oh, my goodness. I think we could, could see, we see it, Kyle? the Duraludon VMAX crumble and fall this turn. And Ross Cawthon maybe tie up this series. Does he have all the resources to pull it off? Oh, this is riveting right now. I'm on the edge of my seat, Kyle. Oh, wait. He's going to attach. Let's to see. the Mew. All right, just attaching to the Mew. Okay. I believe there's an Evolution Incense in hand, but maybe uh, I'm just let me not. See. Maybe I'm misreading that card. All right, That's... well, just a pass of the turn. Very uneventful. Yeah, I know. Yeah, uh, I was like, I'm on the edge of my seat and then uh, just attached and passed back to Christian. So here we go, back to Christian's turn and we are just going to see a fresh professor's research. This is a massive opening because now Christian with the double yes. turbo can find a hyper potion and heal I, off a ton of this I, damage. Wait, did I see? I don't think I saw one, Kyle. Well, still no hyper Seven potion. Seven cards and no hyper potion. Unlucky, absolutely unlucky. There we just see a knockout. The knockout again, going down one more prize card here for Christian. Back to Ross, no longer having that mysterious tail ability because the Mew is in the discard pile now. Okay, yeah, they have the Intelligence there in there. So we can see Shady Dealings this turn grab oh Clara my goodness. and a Magma Basin. And I think that's, that's just the game, right? I, I, I believe so, yeah. I think Ross is... 
deciding that too, like like doing the math here. Is this the game right now? Uh, but yeah, oh, yeah, Christian, yep, that's says, it. Oh, I'm done. Wow. All right. With 40 seconds Oof. left on the clock. Barely, too, Kyle. barely beating the clock there. Oh, my goodness. Once again, Ross with an extremely <laughs> impressive performance. I swear, Ross never lets us down on stream. <laughs> Such a skillful player playing around a matchup probably that he's not even too familiar with. You know, I mean, we saw it there uh, attacking in with the special energy. So I can't imagine that Ross was super familiar with playing against this matchup, but just executed this game to uh, pretty well here and, and took it into a tie, a 1-1 right now with Virtually no time. I don't think there's any time for another <laughs> game. So uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that is absolutely wild. But that was really, really great, too. I guess I don't have to uh, feel bad now rooting for both because we got the tie here, Kyle. I got lucky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, assuming this one does end in a tie, uh, you know, if you're a fan of either of these players or either yeah. of these decks, you can take solace in the fact that uh, a tie actually does still benefit both of these players. They'll have one more shot to win in the final round. Uh, and well, that's, that's that six one and one record does seem like it'll be enough to make it to the top eight. Now we're still figuring that out. It might yes. not be guaranteed, but uh, yeah, don't hold us to like, it. Yeah, <laughs> it does seem like that's going to be the case. We still have to resolve this as a tie. Uh, <laughs> First, so we're getting a couple steps ahead here, yeah. but that that is definitely potential here. So we shall see. We see the shuffling here from Ross, both players setting up. I also, uh, yeah, I don't see any sort of like time extensions or anything like that as far as we know. So we shall see how both of these go. I see yeah. a mulligan here. So yeah, time has been called. Christian okay. will go first. We're just going to get the three turns for the new game. So. Christian will be turn one. So Christian's going to get two turns. There is, you know, an outside chance that Christian could win, right? If yeah, Ross oh, just yeah, has definitely. like one basic Pokemon, like let's say he starts with Radiant Charizard and just passes, we could see a turn two knockout still. So it's not completely over. Out of it's the not question. out of the question that Christian could win. We've but, yeah. actually seen that happen many times too yeah. on the stream. Yeah. So if but that if, happens, that would if be Ross right. can just bench more than one Pokemon. <laughs> Yeah, uh, we're, we're chilling. Be fine. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so Christian starting us off here, attaching the Tool Jammer, a Metal Energy to the oh, Arceus B. Should be and safe. Yeah, yeah. Christian just kind of, yep. <laughs> Can't knock out yeah, that. Yeah, looking like we. Uh, there yep. we go. There we go. And there that, is that will tie. <laughs> officially be a tie for round number seven. Of course, always having to play it out because anything could happen. But yep. There we go, Kyle. I didn't the, uh, have to decide. That's good. <laughs> the attacking Intellion for Ross in that game too, getting off to just enough aggression to win within the time limit. Um, you know, I was questioning that boss's orders play on turn two from Ross, but it paid off yeah, definitely. big time. It, it was the difference in that game. It was able to get Ross those crucial prize cards at the beginning, yep. the crucial damage onto the Arceus V-Star. And that was the reason why he was able to close out game two with just enough time. So that was a match. Yeah, that was, was a match. Yeah. And you know, like I said, that's not necessarily how you always see a Radiant Charizard be played. I mean, we haven't seen a ton of it yeah. because it is from the new Pokemon Go uh, expansion that we have. So we haven't seen a ton of it in the spotlight or anything like that.